Yo, what's cracking everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here. So with Forza Horizon 4 seemingly at this point slowing down and coming to an end, many of us within the community are looking upon the horizon, no pun intended, for what next open world title could be the next big hit. A huge majority have been speculating that Forza Horizon 5 will be set to release this year based on many rumours that have been circulating around, but the truth is, until E3 happens next month in June, none of us truly knows. So what if we don't get a brand new open world racer in 2021? Whether it is a Horizon title, The Crew or Need for Speed, there would be such a huge void that will leave us cruising around these old titles empty and bored. However, there is one game in particular that's currently in development which looks very promising. I have been following this game back in early 2020. Some YouTubers have even started talking about this game and if it wasn't for the worldwide pandemic, we might have already gotten our hands on this game already. And that is of course, Car X Street. Now, in my opinion, from what I have seen, if the developers can execute this game properly, there is a very good chance that it could catch up to a Horizon series and possibly even leave them behind, especially if Playground Games keep including new features that no one asked for and deviate from the core of what open world racing is, and that is what Car X Street looks to be. So why do I believe this game could be the next big open world racer? Well, starting with number one, it's kind of already proven. Ever heard of Car X Drift online? Yeah, well, it's made by the same developers, and I gotta be honest, I didn't start playing Car X Drift until very recently again, as the first time when I tried the game back in 2018 with my wheel, I was just spinning out every time, which completely destroyed my confidence and any motivation to get better. All I did was put the blame on the game and the horrendous physics, completely unaware that I was the problem. And as I started playing Assetto Corsa, which is more of a sim racer, jumping back onto this game now, I completely understand it a lot more with the physics and the handling model. It's very decent. I would say it's a blend of arcade and realism that to drift a vehicle, it does take some skill to execute, but not only that, Car X Drift also has time trials and grip racing, if you'd like to call it that, as well. And this is the part where I think the game leans more towards the arcade side, not necessarily from how the car turns or accelerates, but more so the braking. You can brake very late entering corners with any vehicle, but that to me is absolutely fine. Nothing is more frustrating than driving in a real racing simulator where you're in a production hypercar only to realize that your braking distance was two markers back entering a corner. But there's no real essence of arcadey racing that you'll find in a Need for Speed or the Crew 2 here, and I absolutely love it with my Logitech G920. Not sure how it is on a controller though, and all of this is relevant because Car X Street will be utilizing a similar physics engine as Car X Drift Racing. Number two, cars and customizations. So one thing that Forza Horizon 4 lacks is of course customization. It's quite bland for many cars, only having the option of the terrible Forza wing and front bumper. But this is also due to the ever increasing number of cars that Playground Games bring into the title, which half of them no one even drives regularly. Like who really jumps on Horizon 4 and goes, right, I can't wait to cruise in my Honestly, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's quantity over quality for them. But for Car X Street, it looks a little bit different. Once again, I'm basing this off from Car X Drift and look at this car list right here. Sure, it's not over 700 vehicles, but all of the cars available, I have either driven or want to drive them. And that is how a car list should be comprised. I must add a note though that these cars are actually unlicensed, kind of like Grand Theft Auto vehicles. However, the cars are near identical to their licensed counterparts, which is why this Toyota Chaser is known as the Burner JDM, or this Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10 is called the EVA X. But when it comes down to it, we all know what they are. And a plus, I guess, with having unlicensed cars is new cars like the Supra A90 or the brand new Corolla ZR can easily be brought into the game. And if we have a look at some early gameplay here of Car X Street, is that a Honda Civic EG? 
I've literally just named about three cars that have been highly requested for Horizon 4, and they're all in the Car X series. I can only imagine what other cars they would bring in once the game launches, and of course, the customization. Each one of these cars feature an extensive range of customizations, from various body kits, interior modifications, and even the removal of body parts. You can literally go from one extreme to another. I mean, look at this Subaru Impreza right here. You can change it from the peanut eye variant to the Hawkeye to even the bog eye model. And look, you can even turn it into a Ute. How crazy is that? Now, does the customization compete with the likes of a Need for Speed Heat? I think in certain aspects, it does. Granted, aesthetically, some customization kits in Need for Speed are absolutely stunning, but Car X has its own style as well, catered more towards the JDM or tuner culture, and with hundreds of combinations that can be customized with each vehicle, a handful of cars like this can feel like thousands. Number three, the map. So this is the map that was revealed for Car X Street, and it is called Sunset City. Now, I want to apologize for the poor image quality, but this was the only map that the developers put up on their Steam page. But from what is shown, this map looks pretty good. There's a relatively big sized city, a massive highway, expressway, whatever you want to call it, looping around the perimeter of the entire map, a good amount of toge inspired roads. It looks like an exciting map to drive on. Now you might argue, well, the size is a little small and we often complain about how small Horizon 4's map is. But first off, these guys are a small team, much smaller than Playground Games. Two, we are not necessarily complaining about the size of the map, but rather what's featured in the map. Take a look at Horizon 3. That Australian map was well diverse, making it feel like there was much more to explore. Whereas Horizon 4's map, although they were roughly the same size, it was honestly pretty bland. Everywhere almost felt the same, which gives a false feeling that the map is tinier. Sunset City, and I'll include images here, looks like a map designed for various different styles, creating different groups of races, whether you love drifting, racing, or top speed run. Even Car X Drift Racing has a drag strip too, so let's not forget about that. And what intrigues me more about this map is, although I don't think off-roading will be like it is in the Horizon series where you can cut through anything, some of these buildings, which are multi-story car parks, can be driven into, and I would assume you could just start drifting around, increasing the usability of map space. With all these images shown, you might be wondering, where is this fictional map based on? Honestly, I couldn't give you a straight answer. Initial images that were released back in 2020 made it seem like they were going to a Japan-inspired map with the Tokyo Tower, apartments next to the expressway, but as more of the map was revealed, I'm not quite sure anymore. We are driving on the right hand side of the road, which I'm sure many of you guys are happy about. And just recently, the developers showed off wind farms and lakes, almost looking like they've taken inspiration from Horizon 4 and the crew too. So really, I don't know, but I like where the development of the map is heading and I look forward to more in the near future. Number four, tuning. So as of right now, there isn't much revealed about the tuning element of the game, but it certainly exists for sure. One big part is engine swaps. Since the vanilla version of Car X Drift Racing doesn't allow engine swaps unless you download some mods, a lot of people were a little worried that it may not be featured in Car X Street but it certainly does. And not only that, the engines looks to be 3D modeled. Now, again, because there is no license here, the code names are a little strange, but if you are into your 2JZs, RB26s, or any engines, you'll easily recognize these swaps. But what I want to know is, if, for instance, I apply an engine swap to my car and I have the entire bonnet removed, will I be able to see the change in the engine? Because that will be pretty cool. Say that you went to a massive car meet with a lot of online players and then you see a S14 Silvia with a 2JZ swap or an RX-7 with a K20 VTEC motor. I don't know, but that would be incredibly awesome. Also, gas stations are apparently a thing and the developers are saying that they are coming up with a new fuel system, which could be very interesting. 
Will we have to fill up our cars? Can we run on ethanol as opposed to unleaded? Will all of this change the performance of your vehicle? Do we have to pay for the fuel? And also, can this feature be toggled on and off? As honestly, I think I can see filling up all the time becoming a tedious task. Who exactly knows, but what is great is my final point, which is asking the community. On their Steam page, the developers are always asking for feedback, and that is crucial if you want a game to succeed in, well, any genre. And because this game is quite small in popularity and is trying to dive into a market with all these juggernaut titles, I feel as though when these developers are asking for some feedback and to discuss about certain features, they're genuinely taking in what positive and negative feedbacks have been left. It's a good sign that effort is being made to make this game as best as possible, and with only half a year left before the game gets a full release, this is their current roadmap for the game's development. Each quarter, they will be revealing more of the map. So right now, we are in Q2, and I'll just read everything out in case you guys can't see it. They'll be showcasing clans and factions, event zones, and collectibles, along with the Mountain Drive District. Q3, there will be a second closed beta test, which at the moment they haven't revealed on how you could actually get your hands on that, showing off more of the clan system, AI improvements, triumphant system, and they will also reveal the Lighthouse District. And Q4 will be the early access for the game on Steam. The supposed release date for Car X Street is November 25th, 2021, and I can't wait to see more of this title. This is not a sponsored video, I'm just very excited for a brand new open world racer that seems to cater for the tuning community. So there we have it guys, um, Car X Street. I know it's not exactly a direct competitor to the Forza Horizon series, but at the end of the day, it is part of the same genre. So there's always going to be comparisons made. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button as that would really help me out. Could this very well be a Forza Horizon 5 killer. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys would like to see more coverage on Car X Street and also any news on Forza Horizon 5. Make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.